What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. There we go. Today, we're talking about optimal hydration and how to know if you are optimally hydrated. We're going to break down some very interesting science, but then talk about how you can most efficiently add this information into your current life. Before we get there, I want to thank our sponsors, MerrickHealth.com slash Dolce for the most comprehensive and affordable blood testing program that I suggest to all of our private clients. You can click the link below and use the Dolce discount code to save a few percent, but that is kept all by you. I get no kickback for your use of that code. It lets Merrick know that we sent you. It gives you a nice little discount. And we're happy to see you living a healthy life. Also certified Piedmontese. Go to Piedmontese.com and use promo code Dolce to save 25% on the only grass-fed, grass-finished beef I trust to feed my families. We had grass-fed, grass-finished beef hot dogs on Memorial Day weekend and last weekend. We're going to have it again this weekend because we're doing a little barbecue and it's it's the certified Piedmontese hot dogs. We make our own grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef burgers. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, we do fillets a few times per week. We spoil ourselves right now. So that's go to Piedmontese.com slash Dolce. Click the link below. It is awesome, by the way. Now let's get to making you more awesome. And this is through optimal hydration what we will do is let me throw this up here so very briefly this is this is rather large and complicated in some ways i want to introduce it to you i'm going to put a link into the chat so you can read this at your own leisure i strongly suggest you do so regardless what your background is what your goals are you should be very well aware of this and information like this tab it put it somewhere save it in a little folder of of smart fitness stuff or dolce um dolce file how about we'll put this in the dolce file everyone set a little tab i'm going to start giving you great studies like this um that you want to keep and you want to know so you can know as much as i know and hopefully you can know more than i know that is my goal as a coach by the way it is my goal for you to know more than i actually know that's the goal of a great coach, right? You know, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan became a much greater player than Phil Jackson ever was or, you know, ever could be and probably even has the coaching mindset. But anyway, so keep that in mind as we continue on. Now, this is focused on exercise and fluid replacement. Briefly, let me scan through the summary for you. This position stand provides guidance on fluid replacement to sustain appropriate hydration of individuals performing physical activity all right now this was conducted on athletes but you should be an athlete also you should hold yourself to the standard of athletes not olympic athletes not even professional athletes heck i think this was um generated towards high school athletes but there's more information here so still Athletes, we should all be able to run around a field for 60 to 90 minutes, right? All of us, all humans should be. So let's start there. That will be the barrier of entry, not keeping the average sedentary, high BMI, multiple comorbidity, aging American standard. Because there's a standard for that too. And most of the standards you see are based upon just kind of getting by. We want to gauge our nutrient needs, our hydration needs for the purpose of this video. We want to judge those standards by an athlete. We should be able to run, jump, and skip, and climb, and crawl, and roll, and tumble, and leap, and bound, and heft, and heave, and throw, and squeeze. We should be able to do all that. You don't have to do it super fast. You don't have to deadlift 400 pounds, but you should be able to deadlift with good form, with good mobility, safely, smoothly, effectively, to strain and struggle a little bit through cert certain, certain ranges of that motion. And that's fine. That's a part of it. We should all be able to do that, whether you're 8 or 88. So we, I need you to start there. So when people argue with us and troll us, and people did troll us and argue with us on our hydration recommendations on our Instagram page where we posted five tips to burn muscle, 
or five tips to build muscle and five tips to burn fat. I should do a five tips to burn muscle as like a, a, a counter culture fitness sarcasm, but thought provoking tip. And that, that would be funny. Anyway, when I posted hydration, drinking four liters or more per day, there was a lot of people that dissented. We'll call them dissenters. We won't call them trolls because we'll try and keep the high road here. But the passionate dissenters all seem to believe that four liters was way too much water. People can't drink that much water. If people drank four liters of water, they would come become severely dehydrated as a result of hyponatremia. All sorts of, of mystical allegations were cast and presuppositions were cast without any real context or education. Because those who were saying that they were throwing out sound bites, they were not specifically talking to the actual risks and benefits to what we call is optimal hydration. So we have hypohydration, which is underhydrated. We have hyperhydrated, which is overhydrated. And then we have optimal hydration. We speak on optimal hydration. Now, there are phases that we have helped athletes and you and we, we discussed, and I believe we are experts at managing the hyperhydration and hypo dehydration, underhydration stages. We're experts at, at that, manipulating that, understanding that, working with that, you know, guiding that, cherishing that because we are weight management coaches for UFC world champion athletes and Olympic wrestlers and NCAA high all American and national champion competitors, right? We work in weight management, electrolyte management, hydration management. That, that's what we work in. So just for those of you who might be new to the channel and we are getting a lot of, of new guests here, which I appreciate. I believe it was many came from the Sean Stevenson model health show. So awesome. Thank you guys for that. Very excited for what Sean's doing in the relationship we have, but there are people that are coming here now that don't really know about my background as the leading weight management coach in all of combat sports, specifically working with the UFC athletes. And you can see just a few snapshots of the, the hundreds of events that I've, I've worked throughout the, the past 20 plus years. So, we always operate from optimal hydration. We talk about baselines. What's your baseline? Baseline calorie intake, baseline protein intake, baseline calcium intake. What are your baselines? Do we have baselines? Are we getting blood work done regularly so we know what the baselines are so we can manage those metrics, which is why we do work with a company like MerrickHealth.com slash Dolce. I didn't just take a money sponsorship. Our clients, our community needs to better manage their blood work. Who does it better than everyone else, as affordable as anyone else, and as convenient and cool and intelligent as nobody else? Well, shit, that's Merrick Health. For me, that's why we share it to you. Now, with that, we can manage the metrics. We should understand what our levels of hydration are. You can go get little dipsticks, as we call them, at the pharmacy. So you can pee on a little stick every time you keep it in your bathroom. Every time you go to the bathroom, pee on a stick. For the next three days or so, See how many times you're hydrated versus how many times you're not. Most people will pee on it once, like after they drink a bunch of water, they're like, oh, I'm hydrated. And they'll move on to 23 hours of the day that they're dehydrated or they're suboptimally hydrated, as we like to use that term, optimal. Are you optimal, suboptimal, hyperoptimal? Now, with that, let me jump back in to here briefly so we can show just a little bit more as we talk on real world takeaways from this. I don't want this video to be too long. We're already coming at nine minutes. It'll probably be you know 15 minutes truly to, to wrap this up for you guys. So give me another three more minutes to go over this. Now, you know, really, let's just go down to the findings. Again, I'll, I'll post this for you guys to read you know, hydration assessments and just the confines of the test and, and you know what, what happens, the deleterious effects of um, hyper or uh, hypohydration, underhydration, and very serious issues can result as a, a part of that. You know, this is what contributes contributory factors. Uh, let's say now fluid replacement is what I wanted to get to for you. The goal of prehydrating is to start the physical activity hydrated and with normal plasma electrolyte levels. Now, if sufficient beverages are consumed with meals and a protracted protracted recovery period of eight to 12 hours has elapsed since the last exercise session, 
then the person should already be close to proper hydration. What does this mean? If you've been drinking normally, regularly, frequently, sufficiently, now this is what people miss, sufficiently for the last eight to 12 hours, you will be optimally hydrated going into competition. People think if you've drank ad libitum, which is as you wish over the last eight to 12 hours, you will likely be hypohydrated. There was another study of, of soccer players, 100 and plus soccer players were told they were gonna be on this hydration test. They showed up to game one under hydrated. They could drink freely as much as they wanted to. And still they became more and more high dehydrated as the games. And there was a multitude of games. It was, it was done over three days, I believe. Every game was less than the game prior because they couldn't get out of that dehydration loop, right? So that's a different study. I don't have posted here. I'll see if I can post that for you guys too. Now, go back to this When hydrating prior to exercise, the individual should slowly drink beverages of um, five to seven milliliters per kilogram per body weight, um, at least four hours prior to the exercise. So now this is increasing water intake. The closer you are, you got to drink more water to get up to that, that optimal hydration. During exercise, where the goal is to not lose. The goal is to not lose more than 2% of your total body weight while performing athletic activity. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you have to weigh more than 196 when that exercise is over. And how do you do that? You do that through intra-workout, intra-competition hydration, keeping to hydrate during this period of time. Um, the goal of drinking during exercise is to prevent excessive dehydration, which is more than 2% of your body weight loss from water deficit and excessive changes in electrolyte balance to avert compromise, compromised exercise performance. Um, it's difficult to recommend a specific fluid and electrolyte replacement schedule because of different tasks and issues and things such as that. Um, we know that the predicted sweating rates are anywhere between 0 0.4 to 1.8 liters per hour, right? One liter is 32 ounces. Half a liter is a pound. So anywhere between one and one pound and, and four pounds, you're losing it at people losing an hour. That's quite a bit. That's half a gallon, by the way, four liter or two liters, half a gallon. So now a possible starting point suggested for marathon runners. And this is interesting. And we're going to talk about this in a second. The possible starting point suggested for marathon runners who are pro optimally hydrated at the start is they drink approximately 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 liters. This is eight ounces to 16 ounces. Liters 32. I'm sorry. This is 16 to 32 ounces. Right? 16 to 32 ounces. A pound, one to two pounds with the higher rates for faster individuals competing in warm environments per mile. So they're being told, this is what their sweat rate is here. I'm actually jumping ahead. Um, jump back up. So the marathon runners were being told to drink approximately one pound of water for every hour that they ran. Sorry about that, guys. The screen froze up here. I can't get out of it, so I'm going to have to dump out of that. I will post it for you. The point is, years ago, we worked with a gentleman named Galen Rupp. I want to give it an experience share here. Galen Rupp won the bronze medal for the United States in the marathon. This was the 2000, I think it was the 2016 England Olympics, 12 or 16, I, I forget now, but we were blessed and honored to work with Galen for the year prior to this event and the lead into the event. So we had a great opportunity to very specifically study optimal hydration. And, and body mass analysis, it was, it was such an amazing experience. 
for us and for the team to work with the Oregon Project, which is I Nike's training and science team. So we got to work directly with the, the team at the Oregon Project for an athlete like Galen, which was incredible once again. This is a human that ran five minute miles for 26.2 miles. Aver I think his average was five minute and four second mile for 26 miles. This is insane to think about this. I don't, I can't run that for a minute. I don't think, <laughs> right. Why can't it sustain one minute at that pace right now? I don't believe. Um, but with that, the importance of hydration, how much to be optimally hydrated, but not too hydrated. And then to try our best to maintain hydration through, through that type of event which is really cool. So I have that experience, which there is no higher level in the entire world than the Olympic marathon, right? And we have a bronze medal from that performance and the time and work together. To us, the everyday, everyday folks, we don't have to worry about running 26.2 miles and all, all that stuff and training our entire lives to do that. We just want to get up out of bed, feel great, look great, live great, perform great. You know, that, that's what we're trying to do. And this comes through optimal hydration. So how much should you be drinking per day? Now I'm going to step off out of the, the science a little bit and say, number one, it is very individual. So in general, we can make generalizations, but individually you have to build this for yourself, which is important, which is why I say, get those little pea sticks analysis. It costs you f pennies or a few dollars for a little, little can of those little, little pea sticks. Let's see how hydrated you are over the course of three days. Guaranteed. Like if I asked you right now to calculate how many calories you really ate, if somebody followed you around and calculated every single calorie you consumed from everything you ate or drank, you would be shocked at how many calories it really was. You would be shocked at how low protein you actually eat and how many fats and carbs you're actually taking in and probably how little fiber you're taking in relative to what the norms and the standards are. And then if we went down deeper into the micronutrient categories, woo, you'd feel like you, you were just ready for the, the demolition shop. You know, put a fork in me, I'm done. Take me out to the, the, the backyard and, and, and shoot me by the lake, right? That, that's how you would feel if we really did run these analysis. So the, the concept is you must know that it, it matters and then you must start moving forward in a manner to improve that. Well, hydration is the easiest way. My goodness, to be optimally hydrated is very easy. You simply need to drink more water than you're currently drinking right now. Generally speaking, that's going to be the vast majority of every human that hears this. And most likely, as the other study with the young soccer players showed, they showed up hypohydrated, underhydrated. They showed up to compete underhydrated. If we tested every single athlete at every professional sport, I guarantee you, the majority of them would show up for competition under hydrated. Because to be optimally hydrated, well, that, that's a skill set. And that is a, a pa pattern of behavior. That's a paradigm shift. That is formative, transformative, personal change in order to live a life that is focused on optimal hydration. And that's the point of this whole video. To have this conversation People argue, well, one ounce per pound of body weight or 0 0.4 liters per kilogram per core temperature. People make these arguments, and that's fine. Have all the arguments you want. While you guys have those arguments, we're going to be optimally hydrating. We're going to be measuring real-world data, getting our blood work done, You know, using hydration steps consistently to really understand if we're hydrated or not. And it's a very easy thing to change. So to close, how much water should you drink? The answer is more water. More water, but you should be eating high net nutrient, helpful whole foods in wide variety, fresh, organic, local, as local and in season as possible to maximize the micronutrient integrity. Thereby, hopefully, allocating all the essential vitamins and minerals and nutrients and micronutrients and electrolytes to support optimal hydration. If not, you might need to be adding more salt to your foods. You might look into other forms of, of supplemental nutrient um, support, but most of it can come from food and some table salt, R truly and, and really it can, but blood work will help with this. Then you'll be able to see everything so you know if you do need to supplement. Most people waste money on supplements they don't need because if they looked at their blood work, they'd see they're absolutely fine without the supplement. So blood work can actually, this is not a pitch for blood work, by the way, but it, it's very true. 
you will likely save money by getting blood work done because you won't be spending the money on the, cal the, the calcium, magnesium, zinc supplement you swear that you must have because someone smart said that they take it or uh, an acetylcholine or whatever else this stuff might be. You might be burning a lot of your cash for a zero net gain when you could be rediverting that cash to something much more beneficial, which is right kind of in principle to drinking more water, investing your time into known beneficial pursuits that only have positive outcome and, and drinking more water once again. Not a sexy topic, by the way. It's hard to talk about, you know, drinking more water for 20 minutes in a way, but I really want you to leave here with the point that you need to drink more water. And I say drink water before anything. People will argue, and I have so much experience dealing with, with folks one-on-one, -on -one, one on group, you know, one on internet chats and all that stuff. And there's, there's very, there's commonality in this conversation. Many people will argue that four liters is simply too much water. I can't drink that much water in a day. That's, that is a, a, a self-limiting bias. Take some time and slowly work on scaling up your water intake and don't drink anything else. Don't drink coffee, don't drink tea, don't drink smoothies, don't drink juices, don't drink oat milk, don't drink whatever, don't all the good stuff. Don't drink the Dolce Whey. Well, you can mix that in water, so I'll let it slide. Don't drink anything else other than water and tell me then if you have a problem drinking that much water because you're likely drinking more than four liters of fluid a day anyway, right? Think about the supple shoot. Yeah, that might that actually might be true. You're probably already drinking that many liters or more of beverages, of fluids. So if we started with just water, that you can sprinkle a little Himalayan and or iodized salt into the gallon, just a little pinch or so. You can squeeze a fresh lime, fresh lime in there. Maybe a one second hold of local raw honey squeezed into there. Now you have this very powerful electrolyte solution that is, is, is well balanced, you know, a little uh, a square of 73%, of 78% or greater dark chocolate for the electrolyte component. That's a great, I'd rather get my, my electrolytes from a, a square of dark chocolate, you know, and, and a gallon like this than from neon synthetic artificial microbiome disrupting marketing product, right? You know what those categories are, the AIDS per se. They're the, the those aid power drinks or whatever they are, not no names in particular. Um, so in general, that cat that class, that category is simply trying to mimic what I had just said, which is our electrolyte solution. Man, I should patent that too. But it's just it's it's free content free it's it's you already have salt in your house hopefully you have a lemon in your house you might not have raw local honey but you probably have a little honey or 100 organic maple syrup put a little maple syrup in there instead poof you are ready to roll and i'm going to answer some questions here i see we have a ton of comments so let me jump in and answer those uh, for you guys as we get through here so thank you guys for being here by the way i went a lot longer on the hydration conversation i wanted to show you and let me uh, throw this up in the the chat for you, this is the um, exercise and fluid replacement from the medicine and science in sports and exercise, the American College of Sports Medicine. Um, so this is, there is no higher authority on hydration, specifically with regards to athletics. Let me throw this into the chat for you. Those watching on the replays or those listening on to the audio podcast, if this show makes it to the audio podcast, just go to the Mike Dolce Knows or Dolce Diet YouTube channel and you will see it on the Are You Hydrated video. Now, let me answer some questions for you guys. Thank you guys here. Woo! Shifty, what's up, Shifty? Good to see you, my friend. Jeff E. Mike, can you jog for lists in the morning if you make sure your heart rate is staying below 115? You can. Yeah. Walk, jog, you know, do your thing. Moonwalk skateboard whatever it is but if you skateboarded there has to be that constant intention 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 you know if you ride a bike you have to have that nice pace i, I rode rode my bike this morning i'm starting to expand my bike rides once again so i rode for about an hour today and i had to be careful 
to not go too hard to keep myself in the right gear to keep that, you know, 110 or so pace the whole way through. And I did really well towards the end. I let myself kind of open it up the last 10, 15 minutes because then I was already up into the 130s and it was time to go. And there's this big bridge, you know, into the wind, like up this bridge. It was a great way to finish the day. Mike, can you jog for list? Answer that. Jesse Lee. What's up, Jesse? Much love back, my man. Um, Richard says, Mike, doing the three weeks to shredded program. Why the high fat? Well, I wouldn't call that high fat. Three weeks to shredded is certainly not considered by traditional means a high fat program. We say it is an optimal fat, optimal protein, optimal fat, optimal carbohydrate. On the three weeks to shredded program, you will notice the carbohydrates and the fats play with each other. As the carbs float up, the fats float down and vice versa. As the calories go up, the carbohydrates run on a different cycle, irrespective of what the calorie is doing. We call it a concurrent carbohydrate and calorie cycle. But fats and carbs are also playing their own little dance little, little dance of, of seduction as we slowly shimmy down your body fat percentage while providing enough energy to supply the muscles for harder and harder workouts. Because three weeks to shredder was designed for athletes in training camps. We knew they were going to be training their asses off harder and harder every day while we were getting them lighter and leaner. So there's this whole dance going on um, and that's why the three weeks to shred it is so successful. A lot of people look at it. They don't even understand it. But this is why I'm trying to open source all of our content. So you understand deeply what what's behind what seems to be so simple. Like our Dolce stuff is so simple well, on the surface. It, it's we are the iceberg when it comes to this. Most of what you see is just this very pleasant little tip. Very seductive little tip of skinny sumo stir fries and breakfast bowls and, you know, all of these shredded salads and all these you know, mom's meatloafs and these things such as that. But the underpinnings of the programs, especially the online platform, because this is an algorithm, this is a script that we wrote that actually runs this for you, for the individual. So you sign up to the Dolce Diet.com, boom, you, you join the, the, the three weeks to shredded and or living lean program, the 12 or the four week. You're in this algorithm. This is what's happening. So every day you open your app, every meal, every ingredient, every, every gram is very particularly um, programmed for you. And I, that's what I, so when you say the high fat, but this is not a high fat program at all. This is optimal. This is what the human body needs. If we take the dogma, if we take the tribalism out of it, in our opinion, through our research and through our experience, the three weeks to shredded program is exactly what the human body needs to be optimal. People can argue, but they can't argue if you look at my resume. I've done it for 20 plus years at the elite level with a 100% success ratio. And in most cases, many cases, possibly all cases, we have very, very, specific performance parameters, health parameters that all improved exponentially during our time with the individual client. So the things that we present here for you, Richard and everyone else listening, this is more of the underpinnings of, of what we do. And I think why it's awesome to have you guys here in live chats like this so I can share as much of this information as possible. Oscar Ruiz, what's up, Bobby C.? Oscar Ruiz is joining the Dolce Diet platform. Welcome, my friend. Cannot wait to see your great results. Jeff, um, I answered that for you, buddy. Be huge, be cool. Yo, Uncle Mike finally caught you live. What's up? Good to see you, my friend. BCAAs before and during jujitsu. No, also best pre-workout for BJJ. Coffee. Um, Brown Belt here in Texas. Thanks for the work. Texas, baby. Texas. Um, BCAAs, no. BCAAs, waste of time. You want EAAs, and better yet, you want protein. You want complete protein. What's the most ideal complete protein? Whey protein isolate, specifically pre, intra, and post exercise. Why? Because whey protein isolate is the fastest digested 
and or the easiest digested and the fastest absorbed of the entire protein category. And it is a complete protein. Therefore, you get all 20 amino acids in the right combinations, in the right form with the complementary cofactors they have to make each one work better. Taking just three amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, the three BCAAs, why would I only take three when I can take 20? I can take 17 more in a better delivered format, which would be a powdered whey isolate shaken up with just water. That would be the strongest suggestion to you, Dustin. And then best pre-workout, a little bit of black coffee. That would be ideal. If coffee doesn't do it, you, you got other issues for everyone. Sarah Kate, what's up? Just joined, was wondering how to know if you are hydrated or not. Well, my suggestion is to go to the pharmacy and they have hydration test strips. And every time you use the restroom, perform a test. And then you will see that you're a little hot. You, you are hydrated maybe at a certain time of day, much more dehydrated other times and start to calculate your level of hydration. Do it over three days. It's a little rigorous. Keep a little tube in your bathroom and just, you know, it's simple and easy. But over three days, you will be happily informed on how to improve your hydration. And during that three-day period of time, you will notice your water intake starts to change to start getting better test scores on those strips. And then that becomes a habit, Right? Make sure you're you're eating the proper nutrients, but you know you you have a great meal plan, um, so I'm, I'm not concerned about that. I want to know if the body is able to absorb magnesium from food grade Epsom salt diluted in the water that I sip, not chug, throughout the day. Can the body absorb the magnesium from the food grade Epsom salt? Yeah, absolutely. I don't see why, unless I'm missing something. I don't see why your body wouldn't. And there is conversations and studies on your body absorbing the magnesium transdermally from the Epsom salt soaks. Remember, your skin is an organism. So I, I would assume absolutely if you're consuming it. Um, Binford, F.U. Dolce. Thoughts on fasted lists with a weighted ruck pack. I have a three-mile trail I do in the mornings after coffee with a 35-pound pack and keep it between 110 to 120, beneficial or no. Yes, it is. But all, and I was thinking about this this morning, actually, as I was riding my bike. So I was, summertime, I like to bicycle ride as, as my, my list and my cardio and such, because I can go farther and it's beautiful and scenic. Um, and I saw quite a few people walking with the weight vests on. Those are good tests of strength, in my opinion. Now, if you are in the military, if your job, if your lifestyle mandates that you will be carrying gear at a regular basis, then it makes sense to train the way you compete or train the way you perform. But for someone like me, who's a pretty fit, active individual, I don't do that with any regularity because it changes the biomechanics of your stride. Everyone, every single person I see walking with a weight vest has this hard forward lean. I noticed the posture because I had a bad back last summer. I went through serious instruction and education and, and rehab. So I have, you know, a, a keen eye for postural imbalances now. They're all hunched forward. That's not good long term. Wearing one as a feat of strength? Absolutely. During your, your hikes, I would say... I want you to do your hike with a keen awareness of your biomechanics and postural alignment. Are you walking properly? Are you in reinforcing this proper gait and stride? Or, you know, what muscles are lengthening and shorting? What do your hip flexors feel like? What is your hamstring doing? Do you have an outer kick every time you step? Is there a pelvic twist or tilt? Sounds weird, but during my low intensity walking, that's, I would be more in mind with that. And then I would put a, a weight vest type of workout in as a test of strength, let's say on a hell day on the, the first of every month or the 15th of every month, but first and fifth, I wouldn't do it so far apart. Right. So you become completely detrained, but I would remove it. 
I, it wouldn't become regular. Now, I this is funny that you say it because I was literally thinking about that this morning. But do you do you if you love it, if that's what gets you out of bed, well, do you have fun with that? I'd say, hey, you know what? Take off the vest and go find a hill. Do some hill climbs, hill hikes, hill crawls, bear crawl up a hill 40 times. <laughs> you know, there, there's other ways to to suffer. And I know a lot of people who wear the rocks, they like to suffer a little bit. And I respect that. Do you have any suggestions regarding the flavoring for water? I use a regular flavoring, no sugar, but probably not super healthy. Lime, fresh squeezed lime. That's what we use at our house. Fresh squeezed lemon, fresh squeezed lime. Easy. Like buy a few bags of them, have them in the house. But we also, um, a few companies make 100% fresh squeezed lime juice in, in, a, in a bottle on the shelf in the juice section. Worth it. It's like three bucks. The one that we get is organic. We get it at, Shop right, not Whole Foods. Shop right, or Shop right charges three ninety nine. Whole Foods charges five ninety nine for the exact same thing. So very, uh, I'm, I'm not wasting my money, you know, on, on stuff like that. For three ninety nine, that bottle, I got to tell you, it lasts at least a week, at least a week, and every beverage tastes tastes tropical. You know, it's like if you went to a tropical. Uh, beachside restaurant in Cabo, that's the water they would serve you and, and charge you $20 for. Um, started living lean at 250, went up to 252 and quickly dropped to 249, all from Saturday to today. Boom. Amir, I'm super excited. Keep me posted, man. Stay here. I'm going to do a lot more live chats. Um, and happy to answer your questions as we continue on, but just follow the program. Everything is there for you. And that little weight bump in the beginning is completely normal because you were eating higher density foods, higher net nutrient density foods. The body just absorbs and like, woo, loves it. It sucks it all in. Cause it's not that kind of, you know, no disrespect to anyone. It's not that weak and wimpy food. It's much more nutrient dense food. And the body reacts with a little bit of, of that swollen response. All the good muscles fill back out a little bit again. Glycogen back ready. Let's go coach. Put us in. That's what goes on. And now the body fat, the water weight's starting to come off. Your digestive inflammatory or, or, you know, inflamed digestive system is starting to likely alleviate. Food is processing through much faster, much easier. These easy to digest foods with high net nutrient value are all passing through it in, in, in a great, um, efficient rate. Body fat's going to start to now mobilize because we don't need to store energy anymore. You're training harder because you're so energized. So you can lift harder, build more muscles, which in turn increases your metabolism that in turn burns and utilizes more of the stored fat. Like this is what, this is what we do. So Amir is following our living lean program, which again, you can click the link below, go to the Dolce diet.com. We have the three weeks to shredded plan and the living lean plan, the 12 week bundles, the one that you should consider because that has both of them. You can use whichever one you want at whatever time you want, as long as your it's it's your program. Start three weeks of shredded, transition the living lean, jump back to three weeks to shredded to finish. That's it. Have fun, peak. But this is what we teach and how we manifest these massive um, body composition changes. Um, what do you have regarding flavor? I answered that. Posted that in. Patrick, on top of four liters of water a day, I try to get 16 to 24 ounces of green tea as well. Should I lower the green tea or keep it? I would increase water to match the green tea. Green tea comprises of caffeine. Green tea has a diuretic effect to it, which is great. We love to use the diuretic effect of teas. But we need the awareness of that. So we would increase our water intake in addition to the water we use to drink and make the green tea. And that would almost be on a cup for cup basis. So if you're drinking an extra 16 to 24 ounces of green tea, I would probably drink an extra 16 to 24 ounces of additional purified water. For living lean, why so much Ezekiel bread? Because people enjoy it. It's a sprouted grain bread, which is, is a much healthier bread. You can probably, for every four times you eat bread, no, I'm not saying that correctly. In, in my experience, there's no data to really support this, but one piece of sprouted grain bread is four times better than, no, I'm saying that wrong again. 
Um, <laughs> one piece of sprouted grain bread is far better than any of the other breads. Having the sprouted grain bed with regularity, as you renormalize your lifestyle on the Living Lean program, it's not an extreme fat loss program, Living Lean. It is a body recomposition. It's a transformation program. We're trying to sculpt, shape, build the body while burning additional body fat, increasing all levels of health, right? All your health metrics. And also teaching you how to lead a very healthy, normal lifestyle. That, that's the goal of Living Lean. So all the recipes, you can see how amazing they are. I mean, meatloaf and burgers and fries, like of a certain way in a certain style and a very simple, easy in-home preparation to do these things. But the question is about the bread. It's because we saw that a lot of people, they want some bread. I like bread. I love the sprouted grain cinnamon raisin bread. Like well, that is when I have those, those type of bready carb days once or twice a week. That's typically what I go to sprouted grain, cinnamon, raisin bread, um, with a little bit of, of grass fed butter or raw local honey on it. Oh man, that's amazing. Right? So having that built into the program really provides, I think a nutritional benefit for sure. Cause the, the breads that we suggest are of the highest nutrient value and quality. Um, and also it, it has the, the social, and this is important, which is why I'm going a little long on this, the social and the emotional benefit to keep us fully engaged and not feel deprived and where this becomes a normal lifestyle. We want you to be able to eat everything. We have lasagna. We make lasagna in our house. You know, we use cottage cheese instead of the traditional ragut or ricotta, as they say, Right. So cottage cheese, and there's a, a few easy ways and easy exchanges that we make to make it. We, we'll make our own sauce. Uh, you know, we'll use uh, certain high quality noodles. We've even had quinoa noodles before, which were incredible. We haven't been able to find them since. Um, so that's why that's why the bread is on there. But it depends on your phase also, because you'll see some phases you're having you know a couple pieces of bread per week, and some phases. Phases, you might not even have one piece of bread in a given week because the menu changes consistently on the Living Lean program, which shows variety as once again, we're trying to teach you this is the way to build your lifestyle, to go to grocery shopping. And most of, I'm a little long on this, but I think it's important. Most, you'll see most of the recipes that we have are of the same 60 ingredients. Our grocery list comprises three weeks of shredded, like 40 or so ingredients. Living Lean's about 60 ingredients. 40 of those ingredients directly overlap. So Living Lean is not that much different from an ingredient perspective. But when you think about how many different ways can you make eggs, right? Or beef, you know, or, or chicken or fish or rice, or, or fruit. I mean, baked apples. If, you, if an apple's on your menu, why not bake it with some cinnamon on it? And why not kind of save that for your allocation? You know, we have like baked apple pie, which is an incredible dessert you'd pay $15 for in any restaurant and tell people about it, how awesome it was. Well, shit, you can do that in your own kitchen for 30 cents. So again, that, that's kind of just a little bit more background on, on our program and I think the, the points of differentiation. Um, where do you get your water? Are you doing reverse osmosis from tap, boiling tap water? No, I'm fortunate. So I'm, I'm in, I live in an area that has mountains and I get my water from a water purification plant that operates a water manu or water distributor. So I get this purified, purified mountain spring water. So it's mountain spring water that f goes right to this facility. They built the purification center on top of this mountain spring and they, they process it, you know, purify it, but it's, it's spring water that has been purified. So very lucky. I've got 500 pounds of water in my truck, right? Literally right now, 500 pounds, um, or more actually 40 pounds, no, 500 pounds, uh, 520, I, I think. I'm in my truck right now, um, but do your best. Purified is best because there's a lot of crap in water. You know, a lot of crappy waters out there. Jesse, I got a pro kickboxing fight for July 30th. Currently running two rounds of three weeks to shred it. Smart man. Um, fights at 155 and I'm 162 right now with five grams of creatine daily. Should I keep creatine if I can't get to weight while on it? Yeah. 
you brother, you can keep the creatine. If you're, you're only at June 9th right now, you can take that creatine probably straight up to July 20th with no ill effects, but I would start looking at it, you know, 20 days out, 15 days out, 10 days out, but you're probably, if you're already following shredded right now, you're going to be there on top of it. And that's nice. It's nice for you to be at 55 though. I like this. Instead of killing yourself to make 45, Jesse, 55 sounds like the right class for you. Bigger, stronger, faster, leaner, healthier, better, like whew, scary stuff. Do you avoid artificial sweeteners? Absolutely. The same way I avoid artificial people from my life. Avoid artificial everything, especially artificial sweeteners. Some will make the argument that artificial sweeteners are good for you. They are not good for you. They are justifying something bad that has a slight positive benefit in another area. What does that mean? Artificial sweeteners, well, it means that you don't have to consume as many calories because you can have Diet Coke instead of regular Coke. Regular Coke has sugar. Diet Coke has no sugar. Therefore, you drink Diet Coke. You're not drinking sugar. Your insulin doesn't go up theoretically as, as much as it would um, and you're not consuming as many calories so you can get into a calorie deficit easier by just going from naturally or not naturally by by traditionally flavored products to artificially flavored products well that concept if we're only talking about that concept that math of plus one carb plus minus one carb plus one additional sugar, minus one additional sugar. If we're going by that math, well, all that, all those points make great sense. Yeah. Okay. What about the negative effects to the microbiome? Oh, wait. That's where the conversation is lost. What about the negative effects to the microbiome and are the known, proven, irrefutable, Negative effects to the microbiome worth drinking a diet soda instead of just removing yourself from that conversation and drinking water. I don't drink diet soda. I don't crave diet soda. I don't think about drinking diet soda. I don't drink any soda. I'm shocked when I see people drinking soda. People drinking soda is like smoking a cigarette. Agree or not, that's up to you. Scientifically speaking, I will make a damn great case and probably win the argument in the Supreme Court. That drinking soda is more like smoking a cigarette than not. So take that for what you will. But I believe our side is correct. Um, isn't all the honey and lemon juice and water going to have yo-yo effects on your blood sugar levels? Nope. Probably it's best to stick to water salts and take the lemon juice before meals to separate from water. Um, no, because we want that little bit of honey. We want that little bit of glucose. We want that little bit of free circulating sugar so we can get out there and perform. That's, that's the goal of, of that electrolyte drink. That's one of our rehydration drinks for the athletes stepping off the scales. Um, and also for pre and intra and post competition or exertion. Um, and if you read the charts, you'll see that this is very much in line uh, with what all the agreed upon recommendations would be. It is just the natural form of them. So you don't have to rely on the synthetics. Is Living Lean menu changes just to give range of healthy foods or is there a specific reason the menu changes every couple of weeks? Um, all of the above, all reasons. It's nice from, we look at everything from not just the physiological aspect, right? We look at it from the psychological aspect, from the emotional aspect, like the societal aspect. Because that's, if you don't consider all of that, none of this will work. I could give you the best diet in the world if it doesn't suit your lifestyle. You're not going to follow it. So that's, that's why we do, why we have so many recipes and so many styles and we prevent or we present so many different looks to you. But if you look at the grocery list, you'll see the same 60 ingredients. Now, people are 60 ingredients that may or may not sound like a lot. But if you think of that is your 
ground beef, your wild caught salmon, your dozen and a half eggs, your boneless, skinless chicken breast, your dark meat, chicken thighs and wings. We have amazing um, buffalo wing recipes as part of the Living Lean program. Um, rices, you know, white rice and, and wild rice and black beans and lentils and pintos and um, chia seeds and hemp seeds and flax seeds and cacao. And you go through the list, blueberries and strawberries and raspberries and onions and mushrooms and squash um, and asparagus and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower and garlic. And you go through the list. It's like, oh, man. But those are it's like the same 60 things. Now, think about this. If we selected the 60 greatest nutrients on the planet that were that were in every major chef's kitchen. Well, that's what the Living Lean program is. Every famous recipe you can think of, for the most part, it's in there. But it's all reverse engineered to be totally healthy and totally freaking delicious to the level that our pro athletes, the inspiration for this, to answer your, your, your question here, Amir, the inspiration was when I was traveling with the world's greatest athletes, they would have a significant other. They would usually have children, some of them, many of them. And it was a problem for the household because pro athlete trying to cut 20 pounds and fuel their training and their crazy appetite and young kids with different varied palates and then typically mom in the middle trying to cook for everybody and then eat herself. We said, huh. Wouldn't it be great if there were amazing family meals that made the athlete even better, right? That's, again, what all of our recipes are meant to do. That's what they all do. Many of those recipes are taken exactly from training camps. That's what the, the first, the Living Lean Cookbook number one was. All those recipes in Living Lean Cookbook number one were used in, in the variety of training camps that I conducted over the years. Raul, F you coach. I've been reading about a number of people who drop jujitsu to switch to Muay Thai due to chronic jujitsu injuries. I'm in the same camp of consider and considering this. Have you known a number of people to do this? Yes and no. What do I mean here? All sports injure you. All sports injure you. Runners have to start swimming and cycling, right? Crossfitters have to start doing bodybuilding stuff. Um, Jiu-jitsu players need to do more passive stand-up pad bag work, maybe. Now, I will say Muay Thai, depending on the level of Muay Thai, if you have Kevin Ross as your sparring partner throwing shin kicks at you, I would much rather be in jujitsu getting tapped out by anyone, by anyone, by Tom DeBlass. I'd rather get choked out cold three times a day by Tom. No, because I could tap and then be fine. And But in Muay Thai, part, the game is bone on bone. So you have Kevin Ross throwing kicks at you and John Wayne Parr, Dwayne Bang Ludwig throwing kicks at you all day. That's that's where I crawl. So level of intensity. But if you go to a Muay Thai gym and you learn stance and form and function and footwork and technique and then a little bit of, of Dutch drills, maybe a little bit of bag work, a little bit of pad work, man, high five, do that. But you can probably do the jujitsu also with that mentality. Now, jujitsu is hard because every jujitsu gym I go to. The white belts and the blue belts are trying to kill everybody. The purple belts have been killed so many times <laughs> to become a purple belt that they're happy to just kind of like go with the flow a little bit and, and play the browns and the blacks. Those are the ones that will utterly destroy you and make you better at the same time. Now, all of jujitsu makes you better, but they'll take better care of you. If you have a bad hip or bad shoulder, or you're worried about an injury to a certain area, they're the ones you will tell them they will still destroy you, but your hip will feel perfect. The, the, the whites and the blues will probably, if you say, Hey, my hips a little jacked up, just, you know, be careful. They go, Oh, okay, fine. And they'll immediately start biting on your hip. Right? Fuck this guy's hip. I'm going to win here. My, you know, coach is watching. 
They're going to try and kill you. Purples will, might be a little bit clumsy and, and a little ego. You might get a little, little jacked up. That's my suggestion. But there are many great gyms. And, and tell the instructor, I, I would hate to see you walk away from jujitsu due to a, a – I won't say fear because it's a legitimate concern of injury. But I will say all fitness is injury prone. Right. There is there's fitness. I strained my back doing a leg press last year with a super light weight. I was just in a poor position. My, my lower pelvis was was rounded, flexed slightly forward because the seat wasn't a good fit for my body type. And I felt just a little bone, a little guitar string get pulled back there. And I had to back cycle for like three weeks. Just leave it alone for a while. So point is, be aware but maybe look for a better, better gym, safer gym. Don't leave it. But definitely jump into the Muay Thai, which is awesome. You, you should be able to do both. We should be able to do both. It seems way more common than I would have thought. Yeah, I got to say grappling, it's, it's your, your partner. Are you warmed up, though? Another thing, I'm on the, the soapbox right now. Are you warmed up properly? Are you getting there right before it's time to go and you're going? Or are you getting there already warm? Did you stretch before you even left the house, depending on, on the commute back and forth? Did you already warm yourself up? Are you, you doing all the things nutritionally and sleep-wise you need to do in your regular life to make sure you're not showing up already underprepared? Being warm, properly warm, working on your flexibility, your mobility, some of your, your shrimp drills, your positions, things such as that. You want to be having all that done before it's time to warm up with the team. That is a pro tip right there. You, you, you hear about the Kobe Bryants of the world, the greatest performers. They were the guys and gals that were in the gym 90 minutes before practice. They turned the lights on. Keep that mentality. I'm, I'm in the injury prevention stage of my career right now. I'm still going to make gains, but I'm not going to make gains with the possibility of injury because their injury is already baked into the cake, right? So keep that in mind. Business, F you. Hing, my man, what's up, brother? Hello, Uncle Mike. I'm wondering what dandelion root and uva ursi does to the body. Should I take it every day? Well, that's up to you. Dandelion root and uva ursi are mild diuretics in that they allow the body to release more of the stored water than it would naturally without them. You might consider hang a dandelion tea to be a part of your regular lifestyle, which has diuretic effects. And it's actually a, a nice tea. It's a little bitter. So you might need to alchemy it up a little bit with, with different flavorings and, you know, seasonings and, and, and temperatures even. Um, but I wouldn't say take the pill form forever right that works really well for acute weight loss when we're trying to lose an extra you know three one two three pounds or more of of stored water weight during that 36 hour window when it's, it's your weigh-in day or your your photo shoot day or your wedding day or your you know bikini on the beach day whatever it is so we can use it for targeted acute weight loss also i'm thinking i'd be honored to get kicked by one of those guys oh i agree Right. You could be like, yeah, you know, John Wayne Parr is the reason for this wheelchair. <laughs> you know, Kevin Ross is the reason my head is, is permanently cockeyed forever. But and it would be there is an honor to that because those, those two guys are legends. Um, soda is disgusting. Agreed. I can't imagine. I, I shock people drink soda. Um, nice. Right on, Raul. Um, how much? Honey, are you guys using, and is that just for hydrating at certain times? What I'm asking is, do you use honey every time you refill your water for the day, or is it just before and after exercise? Before and after exercise, that's the most ideal time, and possibly during acute dieting phases throughout the year, when your carbs are actually really low and you are running on fumes. You know, when you're managing those carbohydrates, when you're getting in 120 grams of carbohydrates per day, but you're still training twice or more per day with high levels of cognitive output as a, re as a part of your normal lifestyle and function. So, yeah, we, we we're probably are dripping in some of that um, sugar. We're probably throwing some, some beet juice in there, some cold-pressed beet juice, if not some L-citrulline, right, as an added dramatic benefit also so we can go down deeper um depending on what the performance parameters are but in general no 
I mean, yeah, you know, ah, uh, I say, yeah, because we train every day. And that's the thing. If you don't train every day, then maybe not. If you do train hard every day for an hour, like hard, you train in hard. You don't have to be Johnny Jackson and Branch Warren, right? You don't have to be, uh, um, who's the hard training Mike Chandler. You know, you don't have to train that hard, but do you train that hard for you? If so, then yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, a one second squeeze of honey. It's like a tablespoon. Most people drink way more than that in their, their packet of sugar that's in their coffee that they quote must have. Us, Jesse Lee. Oh, Jesse, thank you for the $5 super chat donation. Very kind of you, sir. And thank you so much. For sure, need to reevaluate my weight class. You told me to move up three years ago when I was an amateur. Much love. See, I'm telling the same story. I love that, man. I'm always looking out for your health. But I also think you would perform better simply because I've seen it so many times. Great athletes are great at the lower weight class, but when they move up a weight class, they become gods. Kale Sanderson, Jordan Burroughs. You look at their collegiate careers. They moved up weight classes and destroyed everyone. If they had to stay at a weight class, for two, three seasons in a row, they probably would be only a one or two ton, right? They, they wouldn't be the level of wrestler that they actually turned into, I believe, because they were able to move up as their body naturally asked them to do so. So they were working with their body, not against the body. And I, Jesse, I think you're there, man. All right, guys and gals, that is it. We're over an hour today. Thank you all for being here. Once again, any questions, please leave them below. Check out our sponsors. And if you want to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, you can simply click that link below. Also, I do one-on-one -on -one private consultations. We can work together on a monthly base basis through our VIP program, which is super cool. Or you can sign up to the four-week or 12-week personalized diet and exercise program. All those links are below. Um. And SJ says, hey, have you heard of David? Nope. And body exercise. Look it up and think about it for human future. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Kyle Dake. Ex exactly. Honus. Dake, man. Look at these guys moving up, moving up. Why wouldn't they? They grow. I, I, all the wrestlers I work with, I'm like, you got to move up. <laughs> got to move up. How long you been cutting weight? Five years, eight years, seven years, 13 years. Wow. You never had a growth season. Well, let's let's talk about it. Let's see what happens. And that's a decision for the athlete, for the athlete's family, for the athlete's management team and coaches. Like, here's what we think. Can we keep you at this weight class? Absolutely. This is what it will look like. My suggestion, probably. Let's look at what this weight class will be because this is what your body's telling us right now. This is what all this data, all these stats, this is what everything's saying right now. Let's look at the two curves. This is what we're saying. So we're just reading the data here. And we build that program out. But moving up, I've never seen moving up not be the answer. You got it. Four times. Raul. Um, all right, guys and gals, once again, I thank you all for being here. You guys are incredible. I got off on uh, answering questions at the end. We did just close the show, but we will be back again tomorrow. Remember, the Mike Dolce Show audio podcast on iTunes, on Spotify, and Stitcher, on Google Play. You can actually click the two links below. They'll take you right to the Mike Dolce Show audio podcast. Click the link, hit subscribe, so then I'm, I'm in your Rolodex, um, and then I'll keep you well-educated and entertained. I'm trying to put at, le at least five episodes per week on the Mike Dolce Show audio podcast. Every Monday will be a longer form, one hour full episode. And then throughout the week, we might have live episodes. We might have a lot of these tidbits are, are better performing, better viewed. Uh, Mike Dolce knows 10 minute little, you know, quick bites of, of fitness information. We're putting in those in the audio podcast also. So every day you should probably see a new download on the Mike Dolce Show audio podcast. Um, Dustin, love the commentary on Jits. He is 100% right on rolling with the color belts. Watch out for the white and blues, right? They're, they're going to kill you. Uh, they'll hurt you, exactly. All right, guys and gals, once again, thank you all for being here. And until next time, let's see this. How do I do this? There we go. Boom!